Number 8. Donna Marie Bell On September the 21st of 2013, a violent argument erupted between British woman Donna Marie Bell and her partner, Scott Morrison, at their Leeds home. The cause of the row remained unspecified, but it escalated to Bell then, in her mid-twenties, head-butting Morrison and repeatedly hitting him over the head with a kitchen bin. Morrison alerted the police, but by the time that officers arrived at the scene, Bell had viciously attacked him with a large kitchen knife. The mother of four reportedly laughed as she delivered three to four knife strikes, primarily aimed at her partner's neck. The man suffered a cut to his hand and neck as he scrambled to defend himself. Fortunately, his injuries weren't life-threatening. The knife attack was reportedly witnessed by the couple's young son. Bell was arrested and during the legal proceedings that followed, pleaded guilty to wounding with intent. She had previous convictions for violence, with her defense pointing to mental health problems as a factor in her recurrent aggressive outbursts. For the latest offense, Bell was ultimately jailed for three years and nine months. Number seven, Byron Redman. 26-year-old Byron Redman went to his girlfriend's home in Dallas, Texas on July the 30th of 2022. The man who was allegedly inebriated and enraged confronted Makija Heath for spreading rumors regarding his behavior towards her during their eight-month on-again, off-again relationship. Redman, an area rapper who performed as smooth and whose lyrics often referenced guns and violence against women. After the two of them had engaged in a verbal dispute, Redmond brandished a pistol, which he aimed at Heath. He grabbed his ex-girlfriend by the hair and had her beg for her life as he pointed the weapon at her face, threatening to shoot. Heath later reported she could see directly down the barrel and that the more she tried to avoid the weapon and get Redmond to loosen his grip on her, the angrier he got. The man brought Heath to her knees and continued spewing threats in her ear. The pistol then went off and Heath was shot through the neck. The woman remembered feeling like her whole body was paralyzed and thinking she was dead. She noted that in the gunshot's aftermath, Redmond came back to reality after having previously acted like he was possessed. He repeatedly apologized to her, maintaining that he hadn't meant to shoot and that the gun had gone off on accident. He carried Heath to the car, leaving a trail of blood from her bedroom into the street and took her to Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas. Doctors discovered that the bullet had gone through the side of Heath's neck, leaving behind fragments that were too dangerous to remove without surgery, but concluded that the injury was not life-threatening. She was released a few hours later, whereupon she learned that Redmond had died at the same hospital. The bullet that had struck through her neck had struck him in the femoral artery resulted in massive blood loss. Heath claimed that she felt relieved by the news as she feared Redmond would have come after her out of concern that she'd speak to the police about the shooting. In the incident's aftermath, the woman struggled with PTSD and was left unable to work due to nerve damage and intermittent pain that traveled down the right side of her neck and arm to her fingertips. Number six, Nicole Dennison. Florida woman Nicole Dennison arrived at her home in Safety Harbor near Tampa to find her husband being intimate with another woman. On July the 22nd of 2020, she and 34-year-old Mark had been married for nearly three years and had two children together. He worked as a bartender and fitness instructor, and he'd made a number of social media posts praising his love for Nicole, with the most recent date into March of that year. Upon finding him mid-trist, Nicole attacked him. She punched Mark in the face, leaving him with a black eye, scratched his forehead, and also bruised his arm. Nicole, who at the time was employed as a flight attendant with Allegiant Air, then grabbed his acoustic guitar and smashed it against the wall, causing a gaping hole. Law enforcement arrived at the scene and took note of the damage that the 29-year-old had inflicted upon her husband and home. Officers also reported that there were indications she was under the influence of alcohol. They arrested her for domestic battery, a misdemeanor. Number five, Charlene Gregory. 40-year-old Charlene Gregory and her boyfriend, whose identity wasn't released, were grocery shopping in Cheshire, England on February the 25th of 2021. 
they encountered 20-year-old Oceana Armit, whom they both knew outside the shop. At some point, Gregory was reportedly told by her partner that the younger woman had made flirtatious remarks towards him. The jealous mother of two then asked Armit why she was looking at her boyfriend, to which the latter reacted by telling her to go away. As Armit walked off around the corner, Gregory charged and grabbed her by her ponytail before taking her to the ground. She proceeded to bash her head against the pavement, leaving Armit with grazing and a large lump. The victim alerted the authorities who told her to go to the hospital and later arrested Gregory. Armit subsequently recovered while Gregory was charged with assault. She had prior convictions for harassment, malicious communications and breach of restraint in order. Her criminal past had resulted in social services taking her children away from her. For the attack on Armit, Gregory was given an eight-week jail sentence, suspended for 18 months and ordered to pay her £250 compensation as well as attend an alcohol treatment program. Number 4. Gemma Hollings In May of 2014, English police in Darwin, Lancashire, found a man lying in the street covered in blood and suffering from severe injuries. Officers learned that 30-year-old Paul Kirkpatrick had been attacked by his girlfriend, Gemma Hollings, at the home they'd been sharing for the past months. The police would describe the incident as a relentless assault and of the most serious cases of domestic violence they'd ever come across, specifying that the victim was lucky to have escaped with his life. Ian Hollins, who was also in her 30s, were recovering addicts who'd been planning to get married. Kirkpatrick reported that the brutal assault had been sparked by a rather trivial argument about her hair straighteners. The wider dispute, however, was attributed to the fact that Kirkpatrick had failed to obtain the money that Hollins had asked him to get from his relatives. The woman beat him with her bare hands and squeezed his privates, causing intense pain. Throughout the prolonged attack, she struck him with a hammer and a hollow curtain pole. Hours after the hammer attack, she broke an empty bottle of ouzo over his head then stabbed him in the neck with the jagged glass, exposing his jugular vein. Kirkpatrick eventually fled the home and was left with multiple cuts, a fractured eye socket, and a displaced cheekbone fracture, which required the insertion of a metal plate to mend. Hollins, whose booking photo showed her with a black eye, was convicted in October of that year. She was sentenced to eight years in prison after being found guilty of two counts of assault, occasioning actual bodily harm, one count of causing grievous bodily harm with intent, and one of wounding with intent. The Court of Appeal in London found in January of 2015 that the original sentence had been unduly lenient and increased it by four years. The incident prompted a broader conversation on the hesitancy of men to report cases of domestic violence. Kirkpatrick, who recovered in the aftermath and moved away from Darwin, was praised for coming forward and the authorities encouraged others in similar situations to do so. Number 3. Star Perez In April of 2018, San Antonio woman Star Perez and her husband Daniel attended a local festival called Fiesta. Before returning to their home, a row erupted in the couple's kitchen after 27-year-old Star accused her partner of having looked at other women during the festival. As tensions escalated, she grabbed a kitchen knife and told the man, I could kill you right now. You don't even know I could kill you. Either before or after uttering the threat, Star swung the knife at Daniel, with whom she'd been married for 11 years and shared a child. She plunged the blade into the upper portion of his left arm. The bleeding man fled the apartment and called the police, who subsequently took Star into custody on a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Today's topic was requested by Mark Nelson. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Brittany Wilson Law enforcement in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, responded to a 911 call on Christmas Eve 2021, made by a woman who claimed that she'd killed her boyfriend. Upon arrival, Officers came upon the caller, identified as 32-year-old Brittany Wilson, standing in the doorway of the residence. A sword was also spotted on the property's front lawn. Upon searching the home, the police found her boyfriend, 
Harrison Stephen Foster, aged 34, dead in the bedroom from multiple stab wounds. Wilson told officers that for several months leading up to the brutal killing, Foster had had multiple entities living in his body and also claimed that he'd been harvesting body parts from other people. The woman claimed that by stabbing him, she was setting him free, but also admitted that she and the victim had taken methamphetamine earlier in the day. Wilson, who adopted a wide smile in her mugshot, was charged with first-degree murder and armed criminal action. She was booked at the Cape Girardeau Municipal Jail on a $2 million bond. Wilson appeared in court on December the 27th and pleaded not guilty while also requesting a public defender. Number 1. Ross McCullum Less than an hour after going to meet her boyfriend on the evening of August the 6th of 2021, Megan Newborough was brutally murdered. The 23-year-old human resources specialist had been dating work colleague Ross McCullum, aged 29, and had gone to his parents' home in Leicestershire, England. McCullum strangled her in the living room, cut her throat with a carving knife to make sure she was dead, and then bundled her in the passenger seat of his car. He drove to a remote rural location near the village of Woodhouse Eaves. It was there that he threw Newborough's body over a stone wall into dense undergrowth, and the following day she was reported missing. The police traced her disappearance to McCullum, who initially claimed she'd left his home safely before eventually telling officers where they could find her remains. As of November 2022, McCullum had admitted manslaughter but denied murder, claiming that the killing had been the result of him losing control or suffering an abnormality of the mind. During his initial police interviews, he stated that he'd stopped taking his treatment for depression and ADHD and had become agitated when Newborough tried to touch him intimately. McCullum claimed it triggered memories of childhood abuse. He told her to get off and she allegedly slapped him, at which point the man fatally strangled her. The prosecution, however, aimed to prove that McCullum's actions had been calculated, arguing he'd made efforts to clean up the scene and texted Newborough to make it seem like she was alive upon leaving the home. Roughly 3,500 messages previously exchanged between the pair showed how the conversation had become overwhelmingly intimate with McCullum, demanding that Newborough call him Lord Commander during fantasized scenarios. The prosecution would argue it offered an insight into what truly lies beneath. Evidence also indicated that they'd already been intimate, and McCullum had reportedly shown nude photos of the victim to a colleague, seemingly unperturbed by the prospect of her finding out. After killing her, McCullum had viewed a YouTube video about serial killers and mass shooters, which, again, the prosecution argued was an indication of his predetermined mindset. Thanks for watching. Would you rather find out that your partner has been stealing from you or that they've been having an affair? Let us know in the comments section below.